Yep. Okay. I think we're there. So, in grand EMF 2018 uh, tradition, we are running half an hour late, but hopefully, like yesterday, we will catch up throughout the day. So, um, I'd first like to uh, welcome our, our, our first speaker, Andreas uh, Kostovaros, who's going to be talking to us about attacking websites for educational purposes only. Over to you. Cool. Hey, guys. I am so sor sorry for the delay. It was like the first time I had no clue what's going on. Uh, shout outs to the tech team in the back for really pulling it through. So, hey, I'm Andreas. Uh, the talk you're about to hear is about uh, attacking websites for educational purposes only. It's my uh, first talk, so like, don't murder me, please. Uh, so what do I mean by educational purposes? Uh, so I'm a student at the University of Reading. Uh, in our second year, we have an information security module, and the coursework for that is to set up a web server and then break into it and then patch it up and like just write a massive report the entire way through. So my initial submission came in the form of a really boring 25-page report without references. Uh, so I've upgraded that into a talk. So you can sc scan that QR code uh, to get a local copy of the slides. So if anyone has trouble reading, uh, go for it. Uh, now you'll get another bonus crash course in information security as well. And I won't be able to demo any client-side exploits because I'm not running Windows anymore. <laughs> uh, cool, so let's get started with the crash course. Um, so I might be ripping my lecture off throughout this. Uh, if you're here, John, thanks a lot. Uh, so beginning with the quote, the only truly secure system is one that's powered off, cast in a block of concrete, and then sealed in a lead-lined room with armed guards. And even then, uh, Gene wouldn't put his life on it. So I feel that's a qu quite an accurate representation of how like, you have to give trade-offs between security and usability. So this leads on really nicely to uh, the CIA, which is what you want your information to be, which is confidential, integral, and then available. So confidentiality means that uh, people you shouldn't have access don't have access, because you wouldn't want your files to be accessed by someone that's not allowed to do that. Uh, you don't want people to change your data while you're not looking at it, essentially or if they're changing the data, you want to be able to find out. And lastly, you want to actually access your information. So the example we gave earlier, uh, yeah, it's confidential, it's integral, no one can access it, but you can't access it either. So that's like, uh, it demos the trade-off between, again, security and usability really well. Um, so a question that gets asked often uh, when talking about information security is how much should I actually worry? Um, you could ignore security entirely and like broadcast your credit card information on the EMF's insecure network. Uh, that's quite bad. Uh, you could get really paranoid and like start using SHA 256, for example, to send emails to your mom or use a messenger, which is also a bit inconvenient. Um, Another question that gets asked is who, who actually cares about my data? So like p there are people, hackers, social engineers, war drivers, some people just want to mess with you essentially. Uh, and what do they get out of it is usually money. Sometimes they do it for fun, sometimes they do it for money again. Um, and the main question I'm hoping you came to see here is how do they do it? Um, so a lot of software has human errors built into that, which usually lead to vulnerabilities. I forgot to put this in the slide, sorry. Uh, if someone uses a vulnerability in an exploit, they can get intrusion into your system, and that's when they can like actually get access to your data. Um, so we're going to look into how to do stuff like this now. Uh, but before I do this, looking at you, Rich, uh, it comes with a massive warning. So the stuff here shouldn't be used for malicious purposes. Uh, back in uni, we, we, we got told that if, if you abuse this, you'll get suspended from uni. But like, I don't think this applies to most of the crowd here. 
There's something about laws as well in the UK, so like be careful. Um, so there are two main ways of finding vulnerabilities. You can either discover your own, so if you're working with open source software, you can read through the source code, identify said human errors, and then see if you can like make something of it. If it's closed source like Google or F Facebook, then you can text all of their like APIs, all their interfaces, and it involves a lot of thinking outside the box. That's why security analysts get paid like massive amounts. And obviously when you find a vulnerability, you usually disclose it responsibly. So you don't make it public, you give it to the company involved. They usually have bug bounties involved as well. So it's a good mon uh, way to get some money. Uh, what I'm doing here or in the report is use vulnerability databases. So a lot of software that gets analyzed, uh, they get assigned common vulnerabilities and exposures, which all have scores. Uh, my screen's messing up there. Um, so s vulnerabilities are scored using the CVSS system, which takes metrics like uh, how difficult is the attack, what kind of permissions you need, what kind of uh, privileges you gain out of it, and it's usually like low to high rating. Uh, that gets cranked through a lot of algorithms and then spits out a number between zero and ten, uh, where high numbers usually lead to really scary vulnerabilities. Uh, so on the right there's an example of the distribution in one of the vulnerability databases. Um, so let's, let's, let's do it. Um, We'll be looking at PHPBB, uh, quite an old form system. Um, yeah. So PHPBB is a free and open source form software that's easy to use, powerful, and highly customizable. Uh, but the version we're looking at today is really, um, didn't chain there, there we go. Uh, a really specific release candidate version of PHPBB. So it has, a, if we look at the, security vulnerabilities, one of the, so here's an example of all of them for PHPBB. Here's one for iOS, for example. Uh, so the one we're looking for PHPBB is um, a score 10, where it lets you pretty much gain shell access to the system and you can just um, run the code remotely. So it's called a remote code execution vulnerability. So the reason I needed the screen so badly is because we're doing a live demo today. Um, so let's get rid of this. So I have a copy of PHPBB running somewhere in the world. It's publicly exposed. Um, more on that later. So you can navigate uh, the form software. It looks a lot like the 2000s because it is from the 2000s to the point where it even has funny images. Um, so I, so that's the victim server running, that's vulnerable, and we're going to see if we can execute some code remotely. Uh, so if I get access to my attacker server, uh, the only reason I need an attack server is so I can have files available publicly because I can't expose them on my uh, EMF network. So if we, so the, the, the way you find it is if, if you look at the source code for p this version of PHPBB, you'll notice that this script in particular, slash includes slash db.php, if you access it, it like throws some errors, and that's usually what you don't want your web server to do. If, it's, if, if you're not, um, if, 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 if you're including a file from another file, you usually set like safeguards that if someone's accessing that file directly, they shouldn't get access to it. Um, so a funny thing with PHPBB is you can give it variables through URLs. So for example, here it's freaking out that we didn't define a database management system. So we can tell it, use MySQL for example, now it gives us some different errors, and one of them is the PHPBB root path. So if you look at the source code for PHPBB, the root path variable tells PHPBB where to ro load the files from. So if we, for instance, set the root path to slash home, for instance, 
it will, so in Linux, that's your home directory. It will try to load slash home db slash mysql.php, which isn't a valid path because it's installed somewhere else. But what this web server has um, vulnerable with it on top of that is it lets you access files from other servers. So if I go to my um, attacker server and then spin up an HTTP uh, server in, in the public, then I can, for example, access it from my uh, browser. And then you can pass that link, if you encode it to URL stuff, if you pass it to, as a variable, it will actually load the files from the web server. Um, so I had some stuff set up already. Uh, let me change it real quick. So if I rename, uh, th this will come in later. So, so, so now if I spin up the, the, the sorry. If I spin up the HTTP server again and try and, and pretty much tell PHPBB to load the files from my web server, it will actually load a request for slash db slash mysql from my attacker server. And since it's a different file, and it, that file, which is on my attacker server, should be executed on the victim server. So for instance, what you can do is, um, create a file uh, called mysql.php. And for instance, we can put down PHP info as the script we want to execute. So this usually just displays all of the information about the local version of PHP. And just like that, the victim server executes code. Uh, so the file I had in there before actually spins up a reverse shell so if anyone's familiar with Linux, so the screen I have on the right is my local shell, so I can execute uh, commands on my local server. But if I delete the file I just made and then give my P, uh, reverse shell file back to where it was, and then, oops, then if I spin that up and then set up a listener, so on my attacker server, I'm now starting to listen for um, incoming just shell packets. And if I go here again, that will pretty much give me full access to the victim server. So now I can do stuff like go to the uh, LAMP server running there and go into the public document store. Um, and then, for example, touch a file. So currently, if you go to my EMF victim dot, for example, EMF dot HTML, it's not available. But if I touch a file, permission denied. Uh, uh oh. I swear, I just set up so it like gives me full read access instantly. There we go. And just like that, a file has been made. So you could, so since this is a really funky shell, as in it gets streamed by PHP, like that does some really fancy packet stuff, you can't e actually use a file editor, but you could echo uh, hello EMF into a file, emf1.html. Permission denied. Oh, it doesn't let you do things either. Oh, and my listener just broke. Um, that's okay, because I programmed my badge to, if I click on the badge, this is the 2018 badge, by the way, just like that, it should give me shell access like that from my badge. Um, so that concludes the live demo of how to hack a really old website from your EMF 2018 badge. Be sure to pick these up later today. Um, why, why should you care about stuff like this? Um, so lack of security is a defect in software, and fixing a defect, defect is a change in requirements most of the time. And we get 
taught this a lot in computer science that the later you change your requirements, the more effort it is. So it's usually helpful to consider security very early on to make sure stuff like this doesn't happen because having your website broken by a badge is quite um, uh, embarrassing. Um, so one, one, one last thing. Uh, I went ahead and took the liberty of exposing this web server publicly. So if you type this in your phones, you'll get access to the PHPBB forum. Um, you can post stuff on there. Please don't use your real credentials on there. I think I set it up so you can post without having to register. Um, and then I've set up a bug bounty. So I've sent a message from my personal PHPBB account to the admin account. It has a certain message to it. So if you find me later today and then tell me what the message is, uh, you'll get one of these Android Legos. Uh, it's a puzzle bot. So, and then anyone else who does something really cool can get a Google Torch. I got some of those. And then I got tons of Android stickers for some reason, so feel free to approach me. Um, so I'd like to thank the entire team at EMF 2018 for bring, like, accepting my talk, essentially. Uh, thanks to the guys at Think Engineer for letting me work on this presentation during work time. And then all of you for putting up with the 30 minute delay. <laughs>